What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video we're going to be talking about a really really important topic that tends to get neglected I think uh, in the kind of YouTube tutorial sphere and that is well a version of Revit that's much cheaper and that is Revit LT. So if you don't know we have the full version of Revit but then also we have Revit LT or kind of a light version of Revit. Uh, now this version is significantly uh, cheaper uh, and it does have certain restrictions. So I thought it might be a good idea to go over a comparison of uh, regular Revit and Revit LT so we can kind of figure out uh, who is this uh, software uh, good for. So if uh, if your requirements uh, fit in with the kind of Revit LT offer, uh, it might be a much better deal than getting the kind of actual full version of Revit because it is quite expensive. Uh, now, before we jump into the uh, comparison, I would just like to ask you quickly to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com. I'm going to include the link just below this video in the description and then also in the cards above. Uh, if you're serious about learning Gravit, uh, it's a really good place to start. Or if you are uh, if you already know something but want to get to that advanced or pro level, uh, there is a lot there for you. So I have over 130 hours of content, of course for different skill levels and that cover uh, vastly different interesting topics in Revit. I go over everything slowly step by step so you understand all of the tools and the workflows. Also there you can find my Revit customized templates, you can find some really high quality Revit families and also plugins. So make sure to check it out. Okay so now let's talk about the most important thing first and that is pricing. So as you can see here on my screen, uh, I have placed uh, basically just the kind of comparison product, comparison Revit and Revit LT. Uh, so the reason why I want to talk about this is because a lot of students want to learn Revit but they're not actual students in a university and unless you're a university student uh, you cannot get the student version of Revit. You can only get like a 30-day free trial which well, it's only 30 days, so it, it, it isn't worth it. It's, it isn't enough time for you to learn Revit. Uh, and if you're not making money from Revit, you, you cannot really pay for it uh, because it can be really, really expensive. So that's why I think Revit LT is a really good option as that learner's package, as that kind of starter, uh, starter option. So let me show you here. Uh, so here we can see here, we have here Revit LT, then we have regular Revit, and then this is the architecture uh, engineering and construction collection or AEC collection. Uh, this includes Revit but also other software like uh, AutoCAD, uh, Navisworks and so on. There, there's a bunch of different software included in this package. This is actually what I have because it's a really good deal compared to just Revit. But anyways, this is about Revit LT versus Revit. So let the fight begin. So you can see that the monthly uh, option is $60 for Revit LT uh, and then for regular Revit it's $320. So it's more than five times difference in pricing. And you can see the same thing on annual and three-year options. Uh, so for annual Revit is uh, $2,500. Uh, and the Revit LT is less than $500. So that's a really significant uh, savings uh, compare uh, between these two. Now we, we've seen the kind of savings, we've seen the price difference, but now let's see what's different with Revit LT. So Revit LT is kind of a, uh, uh, has less options than Revit and let's just now go over those. So as far as architectural modeling, it's pretty much the same apart from the massing st studies that you cannot do and the reason for that is you can't really do massing or adaptive components within Revit LT. So massing basically those wild shapes, you can do that in the massing environment and you can do that in regular Revit 
RevitLD does not have that. So moving forward, we have structural modeling. So you can do some basic structural elements like floors, uh, walls, uh, foundation, uh, columns, beams, braces, and so on. But things like slanted columns, trusses, steel connections, reinforcement, rebar modeling, and so on, these things you cannot do. So uh, if you're a structural engineer, uh, Revit LT might be too limited for your needs. I, I see Revit LT as mostly something for architects. So I uh, just keep this in mind. This isn't going to be available. So if I even open up Revit here, here on the on the structure tab, all of these uh, all of these trusses, uh, beam systems, and so on, uh, rebar editing that's not going to be available. Uh, steel connections and so on. This is not available uh, in Revit LT. Moving forward to MEP, and this is looking even sadder because nothing is available. So if you're working uh, as an MEP specialist, so either HVAC, so ducting, duct systems or mechanical equipment, piping, plumbing, uh, fabrication parts, electrical, just none of this is supported. So if you need this, Revit LT definitely is not for you. Next, we have uh, construction modeling, so parts and assemblies. Uh, now, this is interesting for not uh, only kind of, uh, construction engineers, but also architects. Uh, I tend to use parts and assemblies in my workflow. If you don't know what this is, I cover these topics in my uh, intermediate to advanced level course for Revit. I, I cover over these all of these kind of intermediate and advanced topics in Revit. You can find it by following the uh, link in the cards above and also in the description below this video. So anyways, uh, this isn't uh, included. So uh, basically parts allow you to uh, divide walls and floors into layers and then you can divide those layers even further uh, to basically show how uh, the element comes together within different using different parts. So it's really important for construction. Assemblies are also really cool because they allow you to uh, select uh, a few different elements and then uh, you can create uh, basically basically uh, a set of views. So it's like a project within a project where you can uh, use assemblies to show uh, documentation for, let's say, uh, a complicated entrance or something like that. You can, uh, or a complicated facade, you can just have that facade as like a small project within a project using assemblies. So uh, I, I think this is uh, kind of something that's really lacking in Revit LT. Moving forward to advanced modeling, so we do have groups, which is really good. We have the family editor environment, which means you can create families with Revit LT. So families, things like furniture, things like those elements that you use inside of Revit, you can create those. We have that environment. But what we don't have is the option to send contact to Fomit, uh, Formit Pro. We don't have in-place modeling. So in-place modeling, if I go here, is this, you have the option for creating components. You can either place components or you can model it in place. So basically when you click this, it goes inside of like a, basically you have the family editor environment and you can create things right inside of your projects, which is really cool. So you can just create like elements like this uh, uh, inside of the project directly by using uh, in-place modeling. This isn't available. You have to go and create a separate family and then load that in, which uh, depending on what you do can be quite limiting. Uh, next we have shape editing, uh, edited floors and roofs. So what this basically means is when you create like a floor in Revit, you have the ability to edit its shape. So here we have shape editing. Basically you can modify the sub elements. You can select the certain items, move them around. You can add different points and then you can select those points. You can change its uh, elevation. So I can select this point here, let me see. There we go, so I can move that. So y you can do these things uh, with regular Revit, that just isn't available with Revit LT. Uh, moving forward, uh, global parameters, we don't have those, we don't have conceptual massing and adaptive components. As I've mentioned earlier, this is for creating those you know, interesting wild shapes. You cannot do this. So just, just keep that in mind. 
Okay, moving forward, uh, then we have uh, work sharing, so a multi-user environment. This is not available. So uh, it's quite limited in collaboration. So if you're working in a company where you have uh, multiple people working on the same project, definitely this is um, something where you're going to be limited. You don't have a shared co coordinates among projects. You don't have Revit servers shared viewed and so on. So that's, that's bad. And then we have the simulation and analysis analysis and as you can see pretty much you don't really have anything but uh, these analysis are kind of for MEP or uh, things like solar analysis structural analysis these are kind of specific things and as I said as I see Revit LT it's mostly for beginners people that just want to learn Revit or get started kind of with some first uh, perhaps freelance jobs so I wouldn't really um, I wouldn't really force it for this so yeah so ju just keep that in mind uh, then we have the presentation and visualization here you pretty much have most things you don't have in product uh, rendering and you don't have decals which well decals they're they're nice to have but not really something that's too too uh, too fancy so that's basically you can have like a, like an image which you can slap on a wall or something like that uh, next we have the support and uh, stability so you have uh, most of these uh, uh, apart from network deployment. I don't really know what this is, so I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, next, we have the user interface, so you just don't have the tailored user area. And we have then documentation. Now, this is really important, how you document everything. You do have phasing, which is really cool. I really like that. You have dimensioning, obviously, revision tracking, 2D detail lines, 2D detail components. All of this is really important for uh, detailing. So as, as an architect, this you want to have this and it is available so you can pretty much complete your projects all inside of Revit LT which I think is really good so if you're working just as an architect I think this is going to be more than enough you don't have rebar shapes uh, embedded schedules panel scheduling uh, duct and pipe pressure loss reports so these are all of the things where you are limited. Something that I find really annoying is view filters. Uh, view filters are a really powerful feature inside of Revit, but as you can see in Revit LT, they are not available. Uh, this is basically for customizing uh, views where you can kind of filter out what you want to represent uh, uh, differently. Uh, as I said, it's really powerful, but I don't see it as like a crucial uh, feature for beginners. So if you're a practicing architect, you might find this a bit annoying because you don't have it. But as, as just a learner, I think it's it's okay that, that it isn't there. Uh, interoperability, so as you can see here, you can work with IFC images, DWG, and so on. You don't have linked uh, Rhino and Format, uh, import, export PDFs, you don't have that, you don't have point clouds, SketchUp, uh, and so on. Uh, and then we have data management, which I don't know too much about uh, as far as customized, uh, as far as the work uh, with uh, non-native data so I'm guessing this is like non-native non Revit data so I guess you cannot work with that something that's a bit annoying is customized visibility of linked models so basically uh, when you're uh, when you're linking Revit uh, models or, or CAD models sometimes you want to have a different visibility perhaps have it in half tone or customize it a bit you don't have that option which is uh, quite annoying api and automation you don't have anything uh, and some, something to mention here this is really important uh, third party uh, add-ins so basically you cannot have uh, you cannot have add-ins you cannot have plugins for revit and this is i think this is the kind of the biggest downside of revit lt uh, and the reason for that is with revit you you're quite limited uh, in terms of tools uh, and options and just having that third party uh, add-ins and plugins that's going to give you just massive power inside of Revit and 
I've, I've talked to many different professionals that use Revit. All of them rely on certain add-ins to a certain extent. Uh, some people just kind of constantly work using certain plugins. And in other cases, you just use plugins to kind of solve uh, specific tasks. So uh, it's really powerful to have that ability. Unfortunately, with Revit LT, you don't have that. So this is one of the kind of most important reasons why I think Revit LT is good for learning. But if you want to use it in a professional environment, not being able to use add-ins and plugins is really going to uh, is really going to limit you significantly. So I would start off with Revit LT, and this can be kind of like a uh, in, in closing, uh, I would recommend using uh, Revit LT if you're just getting started just for that kind of price difference uh, and just because it's a lot cheaper, a lot more affordable. Uh, but as you start working in Revit, if you're a solo practitioner, uh, when you start seeing money coming in, I would recommend upgrading to regular version of Revit just because of those additional features that are going to be useful. I mean, even things like slanted columns, things like that they can make your life just a little bit easier uh, but add-ins yeah that's that's the that's the main thing where I think it can kind of make or break Revit LT in a professional environment as a solo practitioner so yeah that's that's kind of my my view uh, my view and if you're just a beginner learning Revit you perhaps want to use my courses to learn Revit as I said link is in the description below this video in that case just go with Revit LT you, you can get the 30 day free trial after that just get like a monthly or annual subscription after you learn Revit after you can see some actual profit from knowing Revit then it's time to upgrade to the full version but as a beginner there is no reason to get the full version of Revit, in my opinion. So there you go. I, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you have perhaps learned something new. Uh, Revit LT isn't talked about that much, obviously because of its limitations, but I think it's really important because my channel is uh, open to beginners and it's catered towards beginners in a, in, a, in a certain extent. So I think it's really important to talk about it. There's actually a cheap alternative to Revit if you cannot qualify qualify for the student license, I think it's the kind of the, the second best option. Thank you for watching guys, make sure to check out my website balkanarctic.com for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.